I think it's safe to say by now that I love Sierra Online. If you're the least bit familiar with them, you'll recognize that most of the music I use in these videos come from Sierra games. What if I told you that Sierra made more than just games? What if I were to tell you that the company has made software that hardly classifies as games? Well, strap on in because I'm about to show you the side of Sierra that hardly anyone remembers. Before we begin, this video couldn't have been made without the resources presented at the Sierra Chest. The Sierra Chest is your one-stop site for anything and everything Sierra. Watch playthroughs of their games, look up walkthroughs, consult game maps, catch up on the latest Sierra-related news, listen and download tracks, and even download demos of games if you want to try them out. The Sierra Chest, cataloging every Sierra game for over 10 years. Hashtag not sponsored, I just like Sierra Chest that much. One last thing. Because these programs aren't as well known, there's not that much information out there I can present to you, even from the Sierra Chest. There will be some speculation on my part, so apologies if I get something wrong. With that, let's begin. Back in Sierra's early days, when their high-res adventures were mixed in with a bunch of arcade-style games, Sierra released their, as far as I know, first pieces of productivity software, Paddle and Tablet Graphics. This was a pair of art programs that basically gave you the art tools featured in the high-res adventures series. Boxes even advertised they could be used for game development. Now, it was somewhat uncommon for game publishers at the time to essentially release the software used to create games, so this was somewhat of a unique experience. Who knows how many people tried their hands at making a game with these pieces of software. Once Sierra went from online systems to Sierra Online, the company started to expand what they realized they could do with computers, especially once the IBM PC entered the picture. Enter the Homeward series. Yes, that's right, this is a series. Homeward is a word processing application claiming to be the industry's first word processor for non-business users. Now, the first Homeward was very primitive. Considering when Homeward first came out, there weren't any of the bells and whistles of today's word processing software we take for granted. Things like spell check, different fonts, even boldface and underlines were something you just couldn't use. That's where Homeward Plus and later Homeward 2 came in. Both of these newer editions boasted even more things in modern word processors we take for granted, including a thesaurus, spelling dictionary, footnotes, and, dare I say, mouse support? Homeward was one of Sierra's biggest attempts to break out of their gaming recognition, but there were plenty more applications that Sierra wanted the 80s businessman to own. Programming software like Speed ASM, Lisa and Expeditor 2, Expediter 2? Exped... In anyways. Art software like The Artist and The Next Step. Even accounting software like the One Right series. Sierra had this safety net that consisted of productivity software should their adventure games not pan out. If they flopped, they could simply fall back on other software and continue making that. Thankfully, that wasn't the case, and Sierra's line of games are still talked about to this very day. Once the 90s rolled around, Sierra decided they really didn't need to keep making Office software, especially after King's Quest V became a bestseller. There were a few remnants of their Office software days lingering, though. Enter the Lapper Utilities. A parody of Norton Utilities, this is a Leisure Suit Larry-themed Office time waster. Have Larry give you an excuse for coming in late. Make your fellow office workers cringe with one of Larry's jokes. You can even make a printable pool sheet for betting on how long the new boss lasts before he quits. It's office software, yes, but it's meant to be funny and not something you could effectively use in the workspace. The Lapper Utilities is that one floppy disk you sneak into the office one day and pass it around to your co-workers without Mr. Boss Man noticing. The other remnant is Johnny Castaway. Johnny Castaway was a screensaver application that was not just a simple screensaver you'd get bundled with your Windows 3.1. No, this screensaver had somewhat of a story to it. Johnny Castaway is a poor guy stranded on a lonely island. While waiting to be rescued, Mr. Castaway has a lot of free time on his hands. There are a lot of different animations that can play as you waste your time watching a screensaver and not getting that paperwork done that was needed on my desk two hours ago, Philip. There are even special animations for various holidays. Now, Johnny Castaway might not have been developed in-house by Sierra, but it certainly helped liven up your cubicle whenever you were off of the water cooler. Following Sierra's sale to CUC and the eventual Sendit merger, Sierra was split into five different divisions. Sierra FX, which continued to publish adventure games, Sierra Sports, which housed Dynamics and Sports titles, Sierra Attractions, which was home to the You Don't Know Jack series, the 3D Ultra series, and later Hoyle titles, Sierra Studios, the main publishing house for Sierra's flagships, and the one most relevant to today's topic, Sierra Home. Sierra Home was, well, home, to productivity software of all kinds. 
Sierra Home was so consistent with releases, there's no real complete list of software they released. So here's some of their products that have, at the very least, been documented. First off is Sierra's Complete Home series. Now cat style programs were a shockingly big commodity back in the 90s, something that wouldn't hit mainstream until The Sims rolled around and gave you the ability to actually live in your creations. Sierra also released separate packages for specific parts of the house, just in case you really want to design the ultimate kitchen or make a bitchin' deck that will please party guests at your next 4th of July barbecue. Heck, they even had a section on electrical wiring. Sierra was really catering to those couples that liked buying fixer-upper houses. Either that or they were house flipper before house flipper was even a thing. Okay, okay, what if you aren't in the market for virtual homes? What if you want a cookbook that doesn't get splattered with cake batter? Well then Sierra's Master Cook series is for you. Make a virtual shopping list, see just how healthy your recipes are, have a virtual assistant guide you step by step. This is just personal trainer cooking for the DS. But what does Master Cook have that personal trainer cooking for the DS doesn't? A Betty Crocker license, that's what. Yes, Sierra is going big with a Betty Crocker license. Arguably the most well known of Sierra Home's catalog is the Print Artist series. While it wasn't originally their IP, Sierra, and later on, Vivendi Universal, held it on for so much longer. In fact, the series is still going strong to this day under a new owner. Now once again, this kind of software was nothing new at the time. Everyone and their grandmother had products like this out in the market. Heck, they even made some for kids. But this is Sierra we're talking about. You can use screenshots from Sierra games in your crafts. Remember Shivers? Yeah, no one remembers Shivers, and that's really sad. Okay, not much from Sierra Home could be considered original, but there is plenty of Sierra software that will make you tilt your head in confusion. They've taken you to medieval kingdoms and the vast reaches of space. they put you in the role of a cup. They've given you a taste of the female body. Now Sierra is helping you... Learn to drive. That's right. Now from Sierra Online... Driver's Education. Driver's education is just that. Driver's ed in the comfort of your own home. Customize your driving experience with driving laws from the state you live in. Drive around in a virtual city and learn all about drunk driving. Now this is the kind of software I can get behind. And I should know. I remember the last time I attempted to drive. Ah, memories. Now if you're super serious about learning how to drive with Sierra, there's always the deluxe edition that comes with a freaking steering wheel. Okay Sierra, you've helped me draw with paddles, typed up Word documents, program my own games, make my work computer the talk of the office with comedic software, design a home, craft some crafts, you even helped me learn to drive. But I want you to assist me with something that still plagues mankind to this very day. Sierra. Please help me with my taxes. Enter Sierra's Smart Money, the be-all, end-all financial manager. Released in 1987, Smart Money proved to be the biggest push by Sierra to prove that they could do more than just adventure games for kids. Well, outside of Homeward, but that's neither here nor there. As such, it was Ken Williams himself that commissioned Smart Money's development, a true testament to Ken believing computers were the way of the future. Heck, Smart Money even showed up in some of their catalogs. Now, would I recommend any of these products today? Definitely not. These pieces of software are what I like to call competently boring and out of date. Yeah, they get the job done, but you wouldn't use smart money today, would you? All of the products I talked about here have either been done better by other companies or are products of their time. Screensavers and parody software have mostly gone the way of the dodo, and I can find proper CAD software on Steam that not only look better, but have features that Sierra could only dream of having back then, like 3D printing capabilities. These programs, at the very least, show that Sierra wasn't just a one-trick pony with award-winning adventure games. And that's all thanks to Ken Williams. Ken was very much on the business side of things, while Roberta handled the creativity side. To put it bluntly, Ken was the Roy Disney to Roberta's Walt. He expanded outside of Sierra's comfort zone of computer games with products the whole family could use. It shows that, despite not being as heavily advertised, Ken Williams was ready to convert anything and everything into something that could run on a computer no matter how niche the audience could be. 
Now if you excuse me, I'm ready to go see if my new driving skills can be put to the test. This should be fun.